Hey everyone, welcome to this week's Azure Infrastructure Update. It is the 29th of November. As always, if this is useful, please go ahead and hit the like, subscribe, comment and share. Uh, a fairly quiet week, obviously in the US it's Thanksgiving. I'm still kind of uh, full up on Turkey, but there were a, a few announcements. In terms of new videos, so I posted a, a pretty big deep dive on Azure Kubernetes service high availability, how we can think about kind of all the different levels of high availability for a solution. And then kind of a, an update about the environment I record these videos in. Quite a few people ask about the setup and I did a pretty big change, well my wife uh, really did a pretty big change around the audio. So kind of uh, goes through that in that video. Networking, so connection monitor, 2.0 um, is GA, not HA, although it is highly available as well. So there was a connection monitor before, that's now connection monitor classic. And what this new connection monitor is doing is taking kind of the best of the old connection monitor, but also things like the network performance monitor that gave me information about um, service connectivity, my express route connectivity. It's really all about what is the connectivity between on-premises to things in Azure, on-premises to cloud services, um, through the various hops I might have, like Express Route, my Meet Miz. So it gives me that complete end-to-end -end view of the connectivity, and I can now specify particular types of tests I actually want to perform. If we actually jump over super quick, so over here, I'm actually in Network Watcher, so you actually go ahead and enable Network Watcher for kind of the various regions you want to use it in. And then you can go to Connection Monitor. You can see over here, you also have the old Connection Monitor Classic. But if I go to Connection Monitor, you can go ahead and create a Connection Monitor. Now I created a very simple one. And again, this can use things on premises, in the cloud. If it's on premises, it's gonna install the log analytics agent so we can go and work with this solution. If it's an Azure VM, it's gonna use the network watcher agent VM extension. Now, so what my one here really just does is it takes a VM in a virtual network and is testing the connectivity to Outlook. So if I actually go and look at that, you can see the details of that performance analysis, the various round trip times I might be experiencing. I can actually look at the overall topology. You can see here that destination going to uh, the virtual network. If I bounce back out, if you create a new one, well here you can actually see, so it's using log analytics to actually store the historical data. You could give it just a name, and then you go and create a test group. So the test group is really the source. So the source could be Azure endpoints like a VNet where it will find a virtual machine that has the agent. It could be something, for example, on premises. Then you specify, well, how am I testing it? Give it a name for the test and then well, it's HTTP based, it's this port, how much I wanna test it from a frequency perspective. And then what's my destination? So now this could again be from Azure, non-Azure like on-prem, external things like the various Azure services. So now you define that kind of complete configuration and then based on that configuration exactly as I have in my environment, it will go and do those tests. I can create alerts on this if it failed. You can see so far mine's looking good. I can see the last polling time. Uh, everything is kind of working as planned. So that connection monitor is a great way to kind of proactively go and check, well, how is this actually looking in terms of that end-to-end? -end. Again, if I had Express Route, it would show me the latency hops between my on-premises to my edge, to the MSEE, to the gateway, to the resources within there. On the storage side, so Azure Files Premium Tier, they recently had a price reduction that was like 33%. But now what they've essentially done is added um, 400 base IOPS, no matter what the level you have, plus it can now burst minimum of 4,000 IOPS. So it, it's really based on, I think it's three times the regular, you can actually go and look, or a minimum of 4,000 now. So if we go and look at this, 
So it now says, well, the new baseline is 400 plus whatever the provisioned um, size is, up to 100,000. The burst is now either 4,000 or three times the baseline, whichever is larger. So for those smaller shares, now I'm guaranteed to still get at least a 4,000 burst IOP capability. Miscellaneous, and there's now ARM support for Azure File Share Backup Configuration. Really, they've got like a sample template here you can go and look at, which will actually go and set up via Azure Policy, um, the backup from Azure File to Recovery Services Vault. You can even create the vault if you want it to. The Azure Cloud Share, they're actually moving from Ubuntu 1604, which is really end of life, to this Debian 10, which Microsoft are actually doing their own kind of compilation of. As part of that, they're upgrading to PowerShell 7.1, Python 3.7, Ruby 2.5, updating a bunch of the tools, getting rid of a, a bunch of the older stuff. So you're going to see the Cloud Shell actually moving to that. The Azure Portal, some GA features, resource group-based resource move is now in GA, as is the filter pills will now actually open dialogues. So if we go and look, if we jump over, and let's say we go and look at a resource group. So if I quickly just go home, and we'll just really, doesn't matter, let's... Um, Go over here, look at our resource groups. I'll actually pick one with something in it. Look at South Central. So firstly, if we click kind of the three dots up at the top here, we now have kind of this integrated move to another resource group, to another subscription, and it will integrate with the complete experience to actually fix any challenges we might be seeing there. But also in this same area, the little pills we see, if I select one, you notice it now opens this little dialog box where I can go and select kind of the things I want to see. So it makes it more accessible rather than just expanding out. So that's really the, the big change there in terms of the portal uh, capabilities. And of course, we announced a new region coming to Sweden. Uh, it's going to have a big thing about renewable energy. So that's super cool. That's it. Told you it was kind of a, a light week. Um, everyone's eating a lot of uh, turkey in the United States. So I hope that was useful. Uh, until next week, stay safe.